God Connects. NASCAR racing is a sport enjoyed by millions of Americans. Each week, 43 cars are prepared by their teams to compete at speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour in the hopes of landing in victory lane. Now that pursuit begins with qualifying. Two laps to record your best time with the fastest car starting the race at the pole position. You know, in many ways, our lives as Christians mirror a NASCAR driver sitting on the pole. Whether you have been a believer for a long time or a short time, we're all faced with a simple question. Now what do I do? You know, a lawyer came up to Jesus one day and asked a question that gets to the heart of the Christian life. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Did you notice the bottom line? The one thing necessary in what Jesus said. He said, love. Love God. Love your neighbor. That's Christian living. Just love. Now that sounds so simple, doesn't it? Well, it may not be so simple when you really understand what Jesus means by love. Most people, when they think of love, they view it as a feeling. You know, you remember that first puppy love. You felt it as if electricity were running through your body. The touch of your sweetheart's hand was so charged it felt like, well, well you remember. Well, is that how we're supposed to love one another? Well, not quite. Several times in the Gospels, Jesus describes love as action for the benefit of others. Here's one. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. When Jesus speaks of love, he never described it as a fickle feeling over which we have no control. No, love is commitment. Feelings are not absent in all of this, but the real basis of love is a conscious commitment sometimes in spite of what you may feel. So how do we love God? Well, it begins with repentance. This means that we acknowledge the things that we have done wrong. We, we look to God's forgiveness and do our best not to do those things anymore. As you learn what the Bible says about how we should believe and live, you may be challenged to change. Making these changes is one way we show our love for God. Our love for God also overflows into our worship of Him. In worship, we're simply saying that God is worthy of our praise and obedience. In worship, we come together as a group of believers to offer praise to God and comfort and encouragement to one another. Or as it says in the scripture, I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress. You are my refuge in times of trouble. Keep in mind that worship is a two-way street. While we may be giving our praise to God, He is already there extravagantly giving us His wonderful things, speaking words of forgiveness, hope, and strength to us first. So when you love someone, you want to spend time with him or with her. In prayer, we're able to talk to God like we're talking to a friend. As we faithfully read and hear the words of the Bible, we know that God is talking with us. So then how do we love our neighbor? Well, the first question may be, who is my neighbor? Well, listen to these words of Jesus. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus includes our enemies among the people that we should love. It's really easy to commit to loving nice people, to do good things for them. It's not that hard to love the poor and volunteer at the food bank. But this thing about loving your enemy, really, Jesus? Really? Well, there is no greater example of this than when Jesus was being crucified. He's beaten, forced to carry a cross up a hill and nailed to it. All the while, his enemies are mocking him and even spitting on him. Then he says some of the most amazing words in the Bible. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. God calls us also to forgive our enemies and then even to love them as Christ loves us. 
So how do we love our neighbors? We do the things that benefit them physically and spiritually. You know, part of the DNA of the church from its beginning is that it cares for the weak and the poor, feeding the hungry, caring for the sick, visiting those in prison, comforting those who mourn. It all flows from the love that God has taught us for our neighbor. You know, these good works by God's people bring glory and honor to God. Often as Christian serves, it, it, it forges relationships and builds trust that can lead to another critical way that we love our neighbors. That is to tell them about this God we know. Since Christians have come to know God and his love, they want to share it with those who don't know him. Jesus gave his people this job to do. He said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There's something very important to remember. Despite our best efforts, we're going to fail to perfectly live the Christian life. But also remember this, Jesus didn't die for us because we're perfect. Again and again, until the end of our lives, Christ brings us the words of forgiveness through his word, through baptism, and through the Lord's Supper. Christians reflect the love and forgiveness they have received. We show our love for God in worship, in prayer, and in service to others. We show our care for others. We have compassion on the needy. We can bring healing to the brokenhearted. All of this is the natural outcome of the gift of faith. And we do not do these things in order to be saved. We do them because we are saved. You are forgiven and you really have been set free to live the Christian life. Drivers, start your engines. The adventure is about to begin.